sorry, I'm tired. Why am I tired? Because it's like I'm back at college at home. Like this is literally like the closest it's been to like college life. I wake up. There's vomit on my shirt. I can see boobs, but I can't touch them. There's poop on the floor. I don't know why. I don't know whose it is. Everything in my house poops. And I've got to clean it up. Today we're talking about poop. No. Today we're talking about ruined brushes. Now, this is probably something I should have done, um, I don't know, when we started doing these because I get asked about this all the time. How can I fix my ruined brush? I ruined my brush. Michael, please help me. I need your help. I think everybody out there at some point in their lives has at least once accidentally ruined a brush. It's a very easy thing to do because people get distracted. I mean, I get distracted a lot. I don't want you to beat yourself up if, if you've ruined a brush, but we're going to talk about the different ways that brushes get ruined and the different options that you have, if any, because maybe there isn't any option. Maybe it's beyond, you know, if it got ruined in a fire, I would say just leave it. Now, some of you that have ruined brushes may have held on to them. You may have held on to them with hope, with hope that somebody like me, a savior, a savior will come and show you the magic trick to saving that brush, to bring it back to life. But as we know, out of all the powers a genie has, cannot bring things back to life. This genie right here, some brushes cannot be restored. It's just the truth, just depending on how far it's gone. I don't see your brush right now. You can hold it up to me right now. I still can't see it. So it's important that you understand if that brush is past the point of non-return, and if it is, get rid of it because keeping it there is just going to remind you of a ruined brush and investment you made. If you, if you think it's past the point of no return, there's no reason to hold on to it unless you use it for th things like, you know, scumbling or scraping. I mean, if you can repurpose it, that's great. That's like recycling, right? So we're going to talk about ruined brushes. Now there are different degrees of ruin, right? I mean, you can ruin, you know, you can spill some wine on your shirt, you know, or breast milk in my case, you, but, but you might say, oh, it's ruined. Okay. And then you can get like, you know, into one of those like contests where you run and they throw color at you or so. It's very bizarre, but I've seen pictures of you doing it, Olivia. It's, I don't, it's not, it's not my thing. But there's different degrees of ruin. So let's look at some different degrees, okay? Now we're gonna look at uh, uh, synthetic and um, natural hair. Now these brushes are both misshapen. Now this is a, uh, a red sable and this is a synthetic hair brush, okay? And you can say that, you can see that they've been misshapen. Now the cause of this misshapenality, is that a word? The cause of the misshape in this, how do, the cause of this warp, I, what's the word I want? What, mishugana, the, <laughs> the, cause of the, the cause of this lopsided, hanging low to the left uh, situation will determine if it's fixable, okay? If you've just kind of left your brush, you know, upside down in a, in a bucket, Okay, this, this can happen, all right? And it doesn't necessarily mean your brush is ruined. However, if you haven't cleaned your brush properly and you've set your brush down, especially like this, sediment from the pigments fall into the ferrule and that's, that's fanning it out. I can't, I can't help you with that, I'm sorry. You've ruined the brush too far. Now, I don't have up here brushes that are covered with dried acrylic or oil. You might have a few of those brushes, right? you know, that, that, that you've accidentally left in paint or purposely left in paint or whatever it was. The God's honest truth is, it's a lot of work and I am really lazy. And more importantly, I think it's important that when you are looking at a brush that is going to take, because you, you can, and, and look, there's tons of tutorials online of, uh, you know, how to clean that ruined brush, but I'm telling you, everything breaks down to elbow grease. You're gonna have to scrub it. And will it ever be the same again? I don't know, it depends on the situation. But I think it's important for artists to know and understand, we're gonna talk about a little economics now. I want you to understand opportunity cost because this is something that not a lot of people consider. If you have a brush that you paid, I don't know, let's say $4 for, let's just pick up a brush, I don't know how much this actually cost, and you decide you wanna salvage it, depending on how much time you put into it, you might have just cost yourself money. Now the most precious commodity we have, I mean in my opinion, is time. It's the only thing I can't get back. I can't make more of. I'm running out of time and I'm wasting yours. Sorry. What was I saying? 
precious commodity. Right. The, the formula I use to figure out whether or not it's worth my time to fix something, whether it's a brush or, I don't know, washing machine. I don't know. You know, I don't fix, I don't fix washing machine. <laughs> I, I have zero life skills. If you make $100 an hour or you make $10 an hour, okay, if you scrub a $4 brush for an hour, you've lost money. What is your time worth to you? If you could spend that hour doing something else like your job, then you can be earning so much money. If, if it's a $4 brush, you make $10 an hour. It's what we call penny wise, dollar foolish. That's what we call it in the business. I don't know what business that is, but that, that, that's just a little term. So we talked about how these brushes were lopsided and uh, I was eventually gonna get to a point on fixing those. When it's a synthetic hairbrush and it's not because it's been sitting you know, like this and the sediment's been in there. It's, it's from when it, you've left it like this. What I want you to do is boil some water, take it off the boiler. Okay, so get it up to that nice little rumble, take it off the boiler, and you're just gonna do little dunks. Now, because it's synthetic hair, it's, it's basically plastic, it will slowly start to straighten out and, 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 and fix itself. And then once it does, you can go ahead and um, lightly pull the hairs into the shape that it was, whether it was a flat or round or bright or whatever it is. If it's a natural hairbrush, when you get a, a natural hairbrush, it comes, we talked about this, it's, it's stiff, especially in the morning. It's stiffer in the morning because in the mornings in our stores, the brushes we put out, the new stock, they are shipped to us with starch in them. Now that starch is designed to protect the tip, okay? Now you can actually Get these brushes stiff yourself if you know the trick, okay? And I'm gonna teach you how to get a stiff brush. All right, everybody pay attention. Calm down over there. If you notice that the hair, you got that, Will? Is kind of sticking out all over the place. Uh, what you can do, okay? And again, this is, this is just from, it was put, it was shoved in my bag and now it's, it's like this. Get it wet. Don't use boiling water for this, okay? Because if you use boiling water, you can damage that natural hair. I mean, natural hair. You're gonna shape it Okay, so I'm gonna get that thing nice and flat. And then what I like to do, what I like to use personally, and you can you know, find other ways, is I use um, gum Arabic, okay? This is a Da, Vinci, uh, da Vinci's brand gum, gum Arabic, but I mean, gum Arabic, you can get gum Arabic anywhere. And then you're just gonna give it a little soak and let it dry. And when it dries, it will have stiffened into a position um, that uh, will you know hold that shape. You're gonna have to treat this like a brand new brush again. So the next time you want to paint, you're gonna want to get that stuff out if that makes sense. But in the meantime, this will help get retrain the hairs to get back into the position that you want them in. Okay. Another thing that I always get asked. So for example, this is a natural hairbrush. Okay, or at least a blend. Um, somebody will say to me, my brush lost its point. Before you start going around telling me that your brush lost the point, because believe me, I lose the point all the time, I want you to take your brush, get it wet, and then you're gonna flick it, okay? Just cross your wrist. If it's wet and it comes to a point, it is not damaged, it's not ruined, it's just the nature of the hair, okay? Because you're not gonna be using a lot of dry brushes, especially for a fine point, okay? Your brush is going to be wet with something, you know? Don't tell me what, but with something. So this was not, or ever was, a ruined brush, it just dried and sometimes it can lose that point. But if it does actually lose the point and it doesn't come to this, you can try to retrain it, like I said, by getting it wet, reshaping it with your fingers. And then you can also, you know, some, some people put it and shape it into tin foil. So just to give it a little bit more of a, a hold on the position. Let me get that so that Will can see. Keep that kind of chiseled there and just let it sit for a couple hours, okay? Does that work for you? I am not a preacher. That might surprise some of you. I'm not a preacher, but I'm going to preach a little bit now, okay? So everybody close your eyes and follow me. It is important that you know yourself. Are you, and be honest with yourself, are you a brush ruiner? Are you a chronic brush ruiner? Do you ruin brushes? Have you ruined more than one brush in the last 18 months? If you have, you're probably a chronic brush ruiner. That means that you just have this disposition that you just, you know, you don't mind replacing them or, or whatever it is. It's okay, you know, to thy own self be true. Know that that's what you are. But I beg of you, and this is where it gets a little preachy, so I apologize. I beg of you, if you are a chronic brush ruiner, please do not buy natural hairbrushes. They're gonna be more expensive anyway. 
Synthetics have really come a long way. I almost exclusively use synthetics personally. It's such a waste of a natural hair where there was an animal involved if you know that you're gonna ruin the brush. The biggest thing that I see that ruins brushes, is that okay? Is that too preachy? You're okay with that? Okay, good. How about you? You're picky. Is what I got going on right here. Now, I put this in a couple hours ago. So far it's been, it's, it's not doing what I want it to do, but if I was to leave this in and then refilm this again in four days, you will notice that this handle, because it's been sitting in water, is gonna to start to swell. What's happening is the water's traveling up the bristles through the ferrule into the handle. Um, and once it reaches the handle, it will start to swell and eventually crack. Now, if this has happened to you, the brush may or may not be ruined, but if, if you can fix it with duct tape and you're fine with the hair, that's fine. If you like to use a brush for scumbling or something, what do you got over there? Oh, perfect. And I'm sitting here putzing around with this. Katie saves the day again. So here, this is actually a great example, even though it's tiny. This brush was left sitting in water, okay? And it lost its protective finish. The brush though isn't necessarily ruined. I can put some duct tape over that. And as long as that bristle is still coming to a point that I want, I'm, I'm still in good shape. I don't have to replace that brush, okay? The, and then here you can see again, this the splitting comes from leaving things in water and then the enamel or you know whatever clear coat thing is splits. If you are a chronic brush ruiner, invest in brushes that you know uh, you're not gonna mind throwing away. I mean, I think that you probably figured that out. You know, don't buy expensive brushes. If this is something that you do where you leave it in water, okay? We actually have a brush. Let me see if I can find it here. This is our Creative Inspirations brush. Now, most brushes, professional brushes, have wooden handles. Okay, it's just, I don't know, there's something about the way they feel, they're nice. And when you think about a plastic handle brush, I don't know, I think about the, the one that comes in the Crayola thing of the, the in the, the, it's just not a good. These brushes have been made with a, um, a resin handle, okay? You can leave this soaking in water, all right? It will not crack, it will not absorb, all right? And it doesn't feel like cheap plastic, it actually feels like wood, which is really cool when you can have, you know, that wood feeling you know, from something else. This is not a ruined brush. I need to say this to everybody right now. To somebody like me, that I want everything looking perfect and you look great. This is not a ruined brush. If you have cleaned your brush properly and you notice that the hair has started to discolor, you got that, Will? Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. Um, that is natural. That, uh, that's not necessarily natural pigment, but that happens. Staining happens. Believe me, I know better than anybody that staining can happen. It does not affect the performance. It just perfects the appearance. Some pigments are staining, and that's just what's gonna happen. No matter how much you scrub it, it might look a little red, it might look a little black, but as long as the, it's coming to that sharp edge, the brush is not ruined. It's just, it's just got its hair dyed. It's kind of ombre, right? Ombre, is that what they call it? Ombre. The best thing that we can do is stop brushes from being ruined at the source, brush ruining prevention. And the best thing, if, especially if you're a chronic brush ruiner, that you can do is get in a routine, a habit, make it part of your ritual of painting to clean your brushes every time. Now I know it can be a pain, but some of these brushes can be very expensive. We want them to perform at their peak because the brush is really an extension of you. I mean, literally it is an extension of you. It's an extension of your hand, your control, it is the tool that will dictate what you want your brain to express onto canvas to happen. This is your way, unless you're using a pencil. You need to get into the habit of cleaning your brushes. Now, I again, this is gonna be a little repetitive if you've watched the uh, video I did at FAQ on how to clean an oil painting brush, but I just wanna say that there are really good products out there. You know, Chelsea Classical's soap, uh, brush cleaning soap. There's the Masters Brush Cleaner, Jack's Linseed Studio Soap that makes it a lot easier to clean out the oil paint. Um, it's, it's not just about soaking it in solvents, and that's really a big thing too. Solvents are used, should be used sparingly to remove excess paint. You've got to scrub the brushes and get the paint out of the bristles or they will start to damage. And store your brushes horizontally, okay? You don't want to store them down because this will, obviously, you see what it does. If you store them like this, anything that, even if you've cleaned your brush, anything that you've forgotten, um, can fall in there and cause that kind of fanning out. The best storage solution, unless you can like hook it, you know, unless you're a hooker, is, is flat, okay? 
So this is going to be the best positioning for your brush storage solution. And it's easy. Just look. Stored. What is the worst thing that you've done to a brush? What is, are you a chronic brush ruiner? I want to hear about your brush problems. I want to hear about how you've ruined brushes. Or if you're very ritualistic about cleaning. If you've never ruined a brush, I want you to tell me. I want you to say, Michael, I've never ruined a brush. Look at me. And I'll be proud of you. I like it. And I want to know, though, uh, if you have ruined a brush and it has been savable, what did you do? I think people would like to know uh, more tips about, you know, is there any little art hacks that you can use? From my experience, though, it's a lot of just elbow grease. You've got to get that gunk out somehow, and it takes a long time, and it's just not a fun process. And remembering that opportunity cost is very crucial because if you're spending two, and two or three hours cleaning a brush, you might have lost yourself money without even knowing it. If you get bothered by staining, because some people can get bothered by it, and, and the brush is still fine. If you get bothered by staining, buy a darker brush. I mean that, seriously. Like this is white, this, this is going to, like this is not, this is a new brush, this has not been used. No, even if I paint with white paint, okay, it's not gonna stay this way. So if that bugs you, find a, a darker hair brush with a hair that, that works for you, okay? It's that simple. You know, finally, when you have a brush like this, you know, where it's crispy, um, I don't know, this is, this is another one of our creative inspiration brushes and it was, it was just kind of left and you can see, you see, you see that? We don't like that, I don't like that. I don't care for that, Will. Um, you know, I might be able to work this out, you know, but I look at it and I assume that there's, you know, because the color comes all the way to the ferrule you know, if I'm diagnosing a brush, you know, I'm a brush doctor now, look at me. It, that's kind of an indicator that some of that paint's already getting into that ferrule, which is not good. That's not good. Um, but if, if it looks like it's, it's okay and it's holding its shape, uh, you can try to give it a cleaning, brush cleaners all around, um, and just a little bit of elbow grease. If it's not going to be too hard, you can get it out. The bottom line is, is please don't ruin your brushes, don't ruin your wallet, and most of all, do not ruin me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry, where I continue to do things to self-sabotage and ruin myself. Did I make any points in that? That was not a pun. Oh my God, that was a pun. <music> and these brushes go to war. You know, they, they get on the canvas and they come back and they're all like, you know, messed up in the head and they need help and, you know, we got to give them, you know, things to do. Right? Right. I don't know if we're going to use any of that, but okay.